Yeshua's anointing has purpose. The purpose is twofold. The first purpose is rescue. He takes those who are poor and he gives them good tidings. The brokenhearted, they're healed. The captives, they are at liberty. And those who have been bound, the opening of the prison door, rescue. How? How does he do these things? Does he literally go in there and open up a prison door? Yes, in some circumstances, that is what happens. But mostly, what he's talking about here is metaphorical. He's talking about spiritual things in a metaphorical sense. So aside from literally opening a prison door or literally setting captives free, how? How does he do these things? One of the answers is the day of vengeance of our God. The day of vengeance of our God? What? There's people out there, the children of men. When the light comes, they hate it, and they run to the darkness, lest their deeds be exposed as being evil. But those who love God and do what is right, they come to the light so that their deeds will be shown as being done in God. The day of vengeance of our God. Why does there have to be a day of vengeance of our God? To comfort those who mourn. It's not just to comfort those who mourn. It's to comfort those who mourn in Zion. He's not coming to comfort the wicked. The day of vengeance of our God is for those who mourn in Zion. And those who refuse to be rescued, there will be no comfort for them. That's the first phase of his anointing, the first purpose of Yeshua, rescue. The second purpose is to empower to empower, to do God's will. So he rescues indeed. Why does he rescue? He rescues so that he can empower his children to do his will. In this empowering, some things are given. When we do his work, when we choose him, we're persecuted, we're hated. His children are treated like garbage by their own families, by their friends, by everybody in their past who does not know God. And even those who know God sometimes end up treating one another like trash. We get burned. The things inside of us, the good things, sometimes are totally changed because the world is constantly trying to burn away the good. He gives us beauty. He gives us beauty for ashes and garments of praise, the garment of praise. Not garments of praise, but the garment of praise in place of the spirit of heaviness. Why does he give us these things? So that they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of Yahweh, that he may be glorified. Have you been rescued yet? Has Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 started to take hold in your life? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he may be glorified. Have you been rescued yet?
not physically, like out of Roman captivity, but spiritually, like the blind being healed to be able to see, the brokenhearted being healed to be able to operate properly and function within his kingdom. If you have been rescued, what are you doing with it? Or if you've been rescued far in the past, what did you do with it? Are your fruits supporting the other trees in God's garden? Or has serving distracted you from learning at the feet of Yeshua with your sister? James tells us that if what we are doing is not obedience to God, we are not justified and our lives are debt to God. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Thus, faith alone, without works, is dead. There are two witnesses that testify of this truth, James and also Paul. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. On the day of vengeance, he will judge based on our works. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Also, and they were judged, each one according to their works. If they were done in faith, or if they were so reliant on mercy that they need more than a sprinkling to stand in his presence still. Are you serving God with all your heart and strength, or has the deceiver bound you in the prison of relying on an overabundance of mercy? And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Lot relied on mercy, the multiplication of it, and he lost everything. Right before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, both Lot and Abraham had conversations with God and angels of God as the angels were trying to save Lot, and Lot was refusing to be saved, refusing to be obedient, refusing to have faith. This was his response to them. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have multiplied your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. He still was righteous, though. God delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed with the filthy conduct of the wicked. Now Abraham, in the exact same circumstance, was called a friend of God. God trusted him. God gave him not mercy, but the other thing his throne is made of judgment. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of Yahweh, to do righteousness and judgment, that Yahweh may bring Abraham what he has spoken of him. The scriptures teach us judgment is good. That is all over the Psalms. 
spattered throughout. David not only is asking the Lord to judge those around him, but he also asks the Father, the Savior, to go through his life with a fine tooth comb even to his heart and judge him. That sounds tough, doesn't it? What's the result, though? We learn that David was righteous in all that he did, except in the case of Bathsheba, which happened when he was in his mid-50s about, I believe. Judgment is good, and Abraham received judgment to rule his household and the generations to come. Are you Lot or Abraham? Is God giving or taking away responsibilities? Can God count on you? Or are your services really a masquerade? Have you been deceived? We are taught to tend and keep ourselves, our being, like we're a garden. Don't keep ignoring the weeds and the overgrowth. Keep yourself well and let God know you.